So we're back with another episode of Building on a Budget and I'm super excited about this one specifically because it's a deck that is near and dear in my heart and I'm going to be honest with you, this is a deck that we've done on this series before, however, this is a lot more uh, modern and updated and honestly, with the reprint of Ground Zeno in the 25th anniversary Megatons, this deck is at full power now. We can do a full building on a budget with the addition of Ground Zeno. Now, if you guys don't know what building on a budget is, it's a series where I take a competitive deck and build it on a budget. Now, the budget that we're playing with is $100. That is the limit. And I'm pretty excited to be showing you guys this one because we're way under $100 for this one. We are at $78.77 for the full deck. You guys can see there's 55 total items, 40 cards in the main deck, 15 cards in the extra deck. And of course, that cost always includes the shipping because let's be honest with ourselves, a lot of these uh, lists or a lot of these building on a budget series, they don't include shipping. It's a real cost, guys. It's a real cost. So here, we're less than $100 with the shipping cost included. And uh, I want to show you guys it includes everything. We're not, we're not like cheaping out on anything. We have Lars. We have Anima, we have Xeno, of course, which is really nice because with the addition of Ground Xeno now, uh, being in the Megatons, uh, we can actually build this deck on a budget and uh, pretty much full power, which is really cool. I also added some really nice things in this deck that I'm going to be showing you guys here in a minute. I don't want to show you guys too much here because it's going to give it away, but uh, let's get right into it because $78 we built on a budget. Dino, one of my favorite decks of all time. Let's go. We are playing three OV Raptors to start things off. Now, OV Raptor, of course, is one of the main pieces of this deck, the main normal summon of the deck, the best card in the deck, let's be honest with you. But the second best card, honestly, Baby Ceratosaurus. This card in tandem with OV Raptor and in tandem with pretty much everything else in the deck is full combo. This card is full combo. And that's why we're playing three Baby Ceratosaurus, of course. So three OV, three Baby, one Petite. Petite is not as important as Baby Ceratosaurus, but uh, it is pretty cool because you can end on this a lot of the time, which pops into Pancratops and Pancratops is a really cool uh, disruption for you. We're not playing the two, we're only playing the one because this is kind of what you want to get off of your petite and it kind of just acts as that disruption, right? So one petite, two Archosaur over here. The reason we're playing two Archosaur, not just one, is because we want to pull Archosaur a lot of the times out of our miscellaneous source, which honestly is the true best card in this deck. This, this card is absolutely insane. If this card ever comes back to more than one, I feel like this deck could be one of the best decks in the game. But one miscellaneous source, of course, that we want to pull our Archosaur off of. Now, the reason we're playing two is because if we draw one, we want one in deck with Misk. But I will say that if you draw the Archosaur, with like baby Ceratosaurus, that's still full combo so it's not too bad uh, this card in your hand is not a brick either right there's ideally like or essentially there's no real bricks in this deck to be honest with you um okay that's a lie there's a couple bricks in this deck we'll talk about it in a minute here but uh yeah two Argosaur and one miss one giant rex as well giant rex can be replaced with cap top terra the other one the pseudo giant rex same exact thing doesn't matter which one you play so giant rex here is, is really powerful one pancake tops like we talked about earlier two ultimate conduct tyranno very standard in dino and then xeno now xeno meteoris is an absolutely insane card and the reason we're able to play this card in a building on a budget dino specifically is because of the reprint of ground xeno this card is now a lot more affordable and because it's a lot more affordable we can actually play this deck at full power and of course we're playing the one frost source to complement the Xeno Meteoris. Now, an engine that I know a lot of people cut that they don't like anymore that I think is still very, very powerful is the Scrap Engine. Now, the reason I think the Scrap Engine is so powerful is because it gives you access to one, a lot of Link Monsters, right? And it helps you break boards, helps you go first, helps you extend, which is really nice. But the reason I really like it actually is because it gets you into Naturia Beast. And Naturia Beast is one of the best cards in the game, if I'm being honest. If, if a deck can make this, you want to make it because it essentially locks your opponent out of spell cards completely. And a lot of your end boards are going to look like Nat Beast, plus like a Lars, plus like a Dolka which is two, four, four disruptions on a minimum, plus an ultimate conduct terrain, which is five disruptions, plus no spell cards, which is absolutely insane. Now, the reason you're able to do this with this engine is Nemesis Keystone. I will say with Keystone, there is a build of Dino that can play Flag and Corridor. So it's essentially the exact same combo. The only difference in the combo is instead of playing Gallant Granite, which gets you to Keystone, you play Banshee, which gets you to Flag and then Flag gets you to Corridor, and then Corridor goes into Colossus, right? So that's kind of the engine. The thing is, those cards are really expensive. Corridor and Flag are like seven bucks a pop, and I think Colossus is also seven bucks a pop. Now, it's not really that expensive if you consider, like, there's a lot of cards in the game way more expensive than that. But if you want to keep under the $100 budget, I mean, technically, we're at $78, so maybe we could do that. But I wanted to keep this as low as possible, so we're playing this package instead. But it also recycles your Miscellaneous Saurus as well, which is really nice, and that's why I like the Nemesis package. And uh, for this package over here, the only thing that I would say is a real brick is Golem. This card, you don't want to draw it. I hate drawing this card so much, Scrap Golem. 
but uh, it is really key. It gives you extra bodies on your side of the field, which helps you link summon, which helps you climb, and uh, that's really powerful as well. So Golem, Chimera, two Raptor, and um, you guys are gonna notice here that we're not playing Lost World, and I'm gonna explain that in here in just a second. But let's finish off here with three Fossil Dig, two Double Evolution Pill, and three Ground Zeno, the brand new reprinted card that makes this deck affordable now. And uh, Ground Zeno is an absolutely insane card for this deck. So the thing is with this card is it gives you access to more consistency, of course, because it's more two card combos. Because you can open Zeno plus Baby, which is full combo. You can open Ovi plus Baby, which is full combo. You can open Ovi plus Miss full combo, you can open baby plus misc, full combo, you can open baby plus arco, full combo, you guys can open baby plus fossil dig, because all of these cards over here that I just talked about can be replaced with fossil dig, so if you open ground xeno plus fossil dig, it's still full combo, or if you open Ovi plus fossil dig, it's still full combo, so you guys can see there's a lot of ways to get full combo in this deck, and that's why this deck is so cool and consistent, I just think this deck is um, is really powerful, it's underrated in my opinion, it's a really powerful deck. Now, I'm not playing Lost World like I said earlier, now while Lost World can be kind of good, the protection effect specifically is kind of cool, I don't know why feel about it because it doesn't really get you anywhere i know it gives your opponent a token i know that if you open it specifically with like like scrap raptor or something like that it can be okay but i don't know how i feel about lost world lost world is an okay card instead of lost world i decided to play more consistency and i actually decided to play a little bit more anti-meta stuff in the hand traps because i think even going first or second the hand traps are going to be relevant for you and um the consistency here like call by the grave just protecting you is good pot of prosperity of course for consistency is that one but that's that's we're still going to play it this card is just too good right so so instead of playing Lost World, I decided to play these. I played three Ash Blossom, three Valor, and three Imperm. Now you can cut one of these hand traps for Lost World if I'm being honest with you. If you want to play three Lost World, you can even cut Lost World to one or two. But the reason I'm not playing it, like I said earlier, is while it is a very powerful card in certain situations or certain scenarios, it's not the be all end all of this deck. And that's why uh, I also this deck is very consistent, right? And I feel like Lost World kind of ruins the consistency because let's say you open combo, let's say you open OV plus baby or Xeno plus baby, something like that, right? And let's say you have Lost World in your hand. To be honest with you, in a lot of those situations, I would rather have like Valor in my hand because if I'm able to combo, I'd have that Valor so that it's another form of disruption on my opponent's turn, which is really nice. You could argue like, oh, Lost World will help your combos go through. I get it, it's true. I just think I just think uh, the hand traps are just more important. Again, it's gonna be up to personal preference, but this is 40 cards in the main deck. And then moving on to the extra deck here, we are playing the one Evolves our Lars. We all know how powerful Lars is. Lars is a really, really good card, especially in this kind of deck, because if it has a material that's a Reptile and or Dino, you actually get to use the effect twice. So unlike a lot of decks that end on this and you can only use the effect once, you can actually do it twice in this one. So it's is really really good Lars. One Logia, one Dolka, of course we know how powerful these cards are. One Solda, so this is something that a lot of people fell off of, but I think this card is kind of cool. Kashtira is still a real deck, and uh, this card is actually funny enough really good into Kashtira, because it's uh, essentially when your opponent special summons a monster, you can get some material from this card, pop that monster, you can do it twice, which is really really good. It's actually better than Lars against Kashtira, because while Lars is in a gate, Lars on its own it doesn't really get the body off the board so if your opponent starts with unicorn even if you were to negate unicorn or they could actually just go into battle phase attack crash and then continue in main phase two uh, versus this kind of stops Kashtira and on top of that the only Kashtira that's bigger than 26 is ogre which is usually a one of in the deck so it's really makes it really awkward for your opponent so i like solda we are playing the one gallon granite of course to search the keystone we're playing the one baguska it's just another end piece that if your combos do get disrupted you can at least end on baguska you can also make this a dweller like it doesn't have to be baguska it could be any generic rank four dwellers another good one we're playing one dugars dugars helps you otk especially going second especially through prosperity you need this card to otk through prosperity but uh on top of that this card is just really good in general and it helps you when you brick like you shouldn't be breaking but it does help you kind of when you do break so it's not a bad card in that sense we're playing one anima of course because we want uh, arcosaur to get to the graveyard which is what you're gonna get to anima and the anima is a non-dino for your double evolution pill if you need it so anima is really good there scrap wyvern of course we all know with the scrap engine is really good scrap engine is also really good going second like unlike lost world and again this is why i kind of don't like lost world unlike lost world the scrap engine at least helps you go second because if you're making scrap wyvern scrap wyvern can pop a card on your opponent's side of the field and start to pick apart your opponent's board so i really like the scrap wyvern over here one pentastag this helps you otk going second as well especially if you have something like conductor tyranno you go pentastag you put everything in defense position and conductor can send of course for a thousand damage but if your opponent's monsters have low defense you can just attack and do the piercing damage which is really nice here one ip masquerina of course this is one of your main end pieces you want to end on this a lot with the unicorn a unicorn is what you're usually going to go into with ip masquerina i wish i wish i wish the megatons made sp little knight a little bit more affordable it's still an expensive card and unfortunately i couldn't fit uh, sp little knight into the budget if sp 
was fittable into the budget, I would definitely do it because SP is an absolutely insane card. But uh, yeah, in this case, we're going to be playing the Unicorn here. One Axis Code Talker helps you OTK going second. And then Avermax, actually. The reason we want to go Avermax, we lost access to Appaloosa with the most recent ban list. But a lot of the time, what you'll end on now is like a Scrap Wyvern with an IP under it. And then on your opponent's turn, you can use IP plus Scrap Wyvern to make your Avermax. And Avermax is just kind of like a big boss monster that a lot of the time your opponent won't be able to out. So it's a really nice card there. And then, of course, one Naturia Beast. Now, Naturia Beast, again, you're going to get into through your nemesis keystone with your scrap raptor over here and it's really really powerful because locking your opponent out of spell cards especially in today's format with like tempi running around and so many board breakers running around if you just end on a nat beast like nat beast on its own can just be game winning for you against against a deck like tempi even against the fiendsmith decks like they can't get into tracked um, against a lot of the Ubel decks, they don't have access to Pain. Like, it's just such a very powerful card in the Cherry Beast. So, if you're able to end on this, if your deck is able to make this, you're always going to make it. But that is it for today's video. This deck, I know, is now really, really good and really, really affordable with Ground Zeno back. But I want to say, the Scrap Engine, again, it's just something that I wanted to reintroduce into the deck. I know it's something that people kind of fell off of, that it was really popular at one point. It's not as much popular now. I still think it's a very, very good engine over here. It's also a really affordable engine. But if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like today's video and and uh, subscribe to the channel for more content like this one. I have a lot of building on a budget videos that I have in mind, especially post Megatons, because the Megatons reprinted a lot of really good cards, which makes a lot of decks like this one, uh, the Centurion deck that you guys saw earlier as well. Those, these are a lot more affordable now. You, you guys can play them now with the Twit Tins uh, and the reprints, so that's why I have a lot in mind. But if you guys have any that you guys want to see, let me know in the comment section down below. And at least this way, I'll be able to build those for you guys as well. Again, at the end of the day, the point of the series is to be able to bring people into Yu-Gi-Oh for a hundred dollar budget. If you're thinking of any hobby, I feel like $100 is, is the maximum that you want to spend to get into the hobby. Of course, this hobby can get expensive. We all know it can get expensive. But $100, you get the main deck, you get the extra deck. And uh, with this budget at $78, honestly, you guys can even build a side deck with this as well. There's a lot of good side deck cards that are common, right? So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.